All right, so I got a whole bunch of uh, new parts here in this video. Uh, the main feature is going to be here the Emacs uh, Eco 2 series motor, and this here is the 2306 uh, 2400 kV motor. I do have the 2807 motor as well, that'll be coming in a future video. But uh, this new Eco 2 line is significantly nicer than the um, original Eco line that was out before. And keep in mind, this motor that you're seeing here is a $12 motor. So when you consider the price, I'm not sure if there's much out there that can beat what you get here in terms of value and performance. It's uh, in terms of like the performance of this 2306 motor compared to a lot of the other ones out there, you know, in terms of uh, durability and everything like that. Mm, I would say this is pretty much on par with some of the most expensive motors out there. So if um, you guys disagree, let me know down in the comments what you think is different because uh, they've done a lot here with this motor uh, and providing a lot of value for a $12 motor. Anyway, so we'll take a uh, come back here. We'll talk. Uh, uh, we'll uh, look at the motor in more detail in a second. I just want to show you what I put this on and all the other parts in here. We'll talk about all that here in this video. So the frame here is the FPV cycle uh, molar frame. It's a five inch frame. Uh, like I said, I guess you'd call it a racing frame. Yeah, sort of camera more centered here, bottom mounted battery, uh, five millimeter arms. It's a pretty nice design. The sandwich plates here, I think are only like one and a half millimeters. They're fairly thin. Um, but the frame itself is very strong and uh, there's absolutely no flux in any part of the frame. Now the internals are protected by this sort of vertical cage here. I believe these are three millimeters thick and uh, we have this stack and everything all protected inside. Using the um, Predator 5 Nano that I reviewed earlier and also the stack in here is the HG LRC FD745. So it's a 20 by 20 stack F7 flight controller and 45 amp uh, 3280 ESD, also 20 by 20. So this is a nice little um, setup here. It's got uh, a steel screw that goes through the whole stack. So no pins. It's got, you've got a wire, wire loom there. It's a little bit long. It goes from the ESD to the flight controller. And the nice thing about this that I like is that the EC is a little bit bigger than the flight controller, so the motor wire attachments to the solder points are a little more accessible to the outside. So this is going to make a nice little motor testing platform, which is why I'm going to probably use this for future motor tests on a five inch platform here. The bottom here, which is hard to see, you can see the, you know, the slots here for the battery stuff, but it also allows access to the M2 screws that go through the stack. And this frame only takes a 20 by 20, at least the one I've got here. This is sort of a pre-production sample, so some things may look a little bit different on the actual uh, version you buy. I think it's available at, at Race Day Quads as well as FPV Cycle. Um, yeah, so overall, can't really complain too much about the frame. It's just, it's pretty standard in terms of a five-inch racing type of frame, but it's, it's uh, I think it's more designed for uh, durability and it's going to last a while in terms of like crashing and stuff like that. that I don't think you're going to be breaking this one anytime soon, as long as you're using, uh, as long as they're using high quality carbon. Of course, you've got the Emax motors. We'll talk about that some more. The uh, video transmitter on here is uh, the E Sheen uh, Nano V2. This one has the um, the speaker, the microphone on there, and that's the only difference that I can tell between this one and the old version. I think the powers, are, power ratings are all the same. It goes up to 400 milliwatts, I believe. So I'm not sure how useful the microphone is. So I'll just, you know, I'll play you a little bit of footage from the DVR recording and you guys can judge for yourself what you think the usefulness of the audio is from this microphone. So you may want to cover the microphone with like a piece of foam or something because you do get a lot of wind noise, obviously, where it is. 
where I've placed it here. So I didn't do that because I, I obviously wanted you guys to hear it without it being altered or modified in any way. But to me, honestly, I never found much use for onboard audio, but I know some people want that. And if you do, this, this video transmitter is probably one of the smallest ones out there. I think it's like a 14 by 14 millimeter video transmitter. It's probably one of the smallest and lightest ones out there that has built-in audio. And the um, video performance, the VTX performance is not bad. Obviously it's not, you know, an 800 or one watt video transmitter for this size. I don't think you're gonna find anything like that, but 400 milliwatts is pretty decent. All right, and the last thing in this video is this, the uh, URUA V Graphene 1300 milliamp hour 4S. I've got a bunch of these graphene batteries from URUV. They have a new line that just came out, so you get to see the performance of this. I was really shocked how much flight time I got on this. The setup here with these props, this was the, uh, these are the FX P3 peanut butter and jelly props. Uh, I think it's a five inch prop. It's got a, I think this is going to work pretty well for uh, high KV motors because it doesn't have a lot of pitch. So um, it's not going to draw as much amps and you're probably going to feel like it's going to be a little bit more responsive on on higher KV motors for this one. At least to me, that's what my sense was. Because it's a, it feels like a lighter prop overall and a more responsive prop. It doesn't have that big heavy pitch. So you're not going to have that like sort of you know, massive power jump in the middle of the throttle and at the top when you have like a high pitch, but because it's a not as wide as a blade and not as much of a pitch, this kind of a prop is probably gonna do better for higher KV motors where you want a little bit more response. So kind of depends what you're looking for, but you know, you know again, there's so many props out there. Um, hard, it's hard to really say what you will like specifically. I specifically like props like this because of the lower pitch and the lightweight and a thinner blade. That's, those are the kind of props that I tend to go for. You probably notice that, like the ones with the big blades and big pitch, I don't usually tend to use, not like those kind of props and the way they feel in the air. All right, so let's go back to the motor here. And you can see we got this nice shiny uh, finish here. The They did do some upgrades on this for durability uh, from the previous version. They have uh, N52SH magnets now that are curved and there, the air gap is also much less, so you should have more power and more efficiency. 16 by 16 M3 screws. Um, the bearing in here is upgraded to a nine millimeter bearing, so that's gonna make the motor feel smoother and does feel smoother in the hand and in the air as well. The windings here are multi-stranded copper, and uh, some people are not going to like that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure why people prefer one or the other. If you guys can tell me the reasons why, uh, let me know down in the comments as to which one you think is better and why. Um, I can't tend to know what the difference is in terms of feel. The magnets and the air gaps seem to me make more of a difference to me than the actual uh, composition of the windings themselves. Although I think it has something to do with the way heat is generated and just dissipated, but this motor never got hot, at least on the uh, default pitching that I got. They did have some epoxy put on there on the windings as you can see there. So it's probably there in case somebody puts in a long, uh, too long of a screw and, uh, you know, and if you do that, then if there's nothing protecting the windings, then you'll just damage the motor. Um, also, even if you don't do that, sometimes, you know, like rocks or something might get kicked up in here and that could damage the windings. So having this little epoxy layer to protect the windings and hold them in place not a bad idea. It does add a little bit of weight, but it does improve the durability of the motor, I think, overall. Um, I think this is something that I would like to see from other motor manufacturers uh, of all sizes, just to protect the windings, because that's typically what causes motors to die. Um, I've had like rocks and stuff come up and hit inside, uh, you know, the winding, and then you can see it's damaged. You don't actually how you're not actually sure how it got damaged, and the motor doesn't work anymore. So. That's just, uh, I think, a no-brainer. That's something that I think all motor, motor manufacturers should do. Now, in terms of the weight here, this isn't the lightest 2306 motor out there. Uh, they're using a steel shaft here and not a titanium shaft. So I think the Zing 2306 motor with a titanium shaft is uh, going to be a couple grams lighter than this one. Uh, but that one, of course, a titanium shaft is going to be 
much uh, more expensive as well. So I think those motors are like $20, this is like $12. So it's coming at 33.4 grams. I think the Zing E motors, I also have the steel shaft is coming in at a similar weight to this one. All right, so I'm gonna take the uh, bell off here. There's a set screw here on the bottom. It is, looks like it, they're using some sort of Loctite on here to hold it in. And can't really tell, but there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a substance there. And you can see there's a washer on the set screw. And here's what the bearing looks like on the bottom. Okay, so yeah, the the magnets are very strong. Uh, pretty hard to pop, pop that bell off. And here we can get a closer look at the stator. You do have this little lip here for the uh, motor wire, so it doesn't get in the way. And then it's like uh, this little washer here popped off. This is from the top. It's right there. And let's look at the bearing again from the top. Well, overall construction is pretty solid. And here's a look at the bell. Again, N52SH curved magnets. Yeah, so overall, very nice motor for the money. All right, so last thing I want to show you before I uh, show you the flight footage is how much this particular build weighs, just for reference. Uh, no battery, of course, and 267 grams. This uh, 1300 for us is 168.1 grams, and here is what the all up weight was for the flying. It's coming in at 435 grams. Okay, so that's it for the talking part of this video. I'll have the flight footage here at the end. Um, I will have another video on the 2807 motors on a seven inch, of course coming up in a future video, so stay tuned for that. And that's gonna do it for this one. Talk to you guys later. So this is a total stock Betaflight tune. Uh, 4.23, I think. I'm running the uh, Essex Ethics S3 props Eco 2 2306 motors 2400 kV on this new uh, kebab FPV molar frame. Stutter there. Yeah, could use a little tuning maybe, but yeah, right when I pull off of that full throttle, it stutters a little bit. So pretty minor. I'll probably need some TPA. But otherwise, I'll load a mid throttle. Pretty fine. Oh, it's very responsive.
I'd say these aren't the most powerful 23 or six motors I've ever flown. Uh, they're not bad though. Might need to throw these on some sort of a freestyle rig. See how it handles a little bit more weight. These, oh, by the way, I'm also flying a new UR UAV Graphene 1300 4S. Starting to feel a little bit of battery sag. Going for a completely stock tune. No tuning whatsoever. It's not bad. Still 14 and a half volts. Wow, that's a really long flight time. For 1300 for us. Uh, that's kind of crazy actually. But I, I am feeling like I'm at towards, uh, getting towards the end of the battery here. It's not as peppy as it was at the beginning. All right, now I'm definitely at the end of the battery. 14.3. About five minutes of flight time on a 1300. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Nice smooth motor.